decision to come this evening here. <laughs> no, perfect, because I would take it as an example. So I would say like this. Some people which have been here, who have been here before at uh, events of the network, and they were feeling good, and they had great speakers, and they met really nice people, and they had good time, uh, they were just registering and saying, I go to the network. They didn't look exactly what was the theme, who was talking, what was the thing. So they were taking decisions based on past experiences. Mm -hmm. Then there are other people that they just had a call and say, you go, I go today at some presentation in the evening, do you want to come? I say, yes, these are people that they were giving temptations. They say, okay, I don't have anything, so just based on present moment. And there were people that, even if they've been here before or not, they were looking, what is the topic I'm interested in? Is this going to be helpful for what I want to do this year? Do I have the time? Is this meeting my purpose? And these were persons that they took decision based on their future planning. So, when we talk about time, we talk because time matters, no matter who we are and what we do. And each person has a time perspective. And this perspective is influencing our thoughts, our emotions, our behavior, our decision process. It's influencing our life. But in the same time, it's just a concept we invent it as humans. So therefore, must be some learning process. And also, we can change it. In matters of mind, mindset, past is about memories, present is perception, and future is imagination. Now, what we <coughs> do if we will not have any external clues about what time is? So every cell in nature has an internal clock and our brain has a master clock uh, and is measuring the circadian rhythm. It's lower than 24 hours and is reset by environmental factors. So research uh, done with people that they have been in a room without natural light like this one or in some caves they had no uh, clock or other tools to measure times, generally they don't manage to keep track of the time. They don't know anymore if it's day, if it's night, if they have to eat, if they have to sleep. It's going in a certain manner, it's clearly distressing. It's also some mental disorders are affecting our <coughs> time perception. Uh, some is, um, they are making us thinking that uh, time passes very slow, like depression. In certain manga is because time passes very fast. In dementia it's a total confusion, we don't know what is far past or near past. So, we all know the story of relativity of time, in the sense that when we are in a pleasant, uh, holiday or with a nice person, time passes very fast, and when we are uh, having a pain, we are sick, we are in a very bad situation, we have the impression that time is long and it's never passing. But time perspective is more than this. It's like a little bit like space perspective, because everybody we have one, so I see the faces of most of you. Those of you who are in the first row will see my face. The second row will see a little bit the back of the first row, but also you have some left and right profiles and so on. So the time is the same. Now, most of the things we know about time is culture. And I found uh, just a couple of days ago, um, um, article on the Business Insider of Richard Lewis, who is a linguist, explaining the most basic 
cultural concept, <laughs> the Western, so it's linear, we go from A to B to C, and it's morning, it's afternoon, it's evening, and the Oriental one, which is more round. So for them, everything is every influencing everything. So what I do in the past is influencing my present and also my future. So there's no clear boundary between them. But also in our own culture. Oh, I don't know why this is not visible. Well, uh, sorry for you, uh, for those of you who are from Italy, Spain, or from Romania, because there is even Spanish eyes. But in fact, it's the same up there, should be the same thing like here, but deeper. So they say Spanish eyes and German eyes. This is a generalization. We cannot go for every individual and say, okay, all the Spanish, all the Italians are like this, and all the Germans are like this. I have an example. Oh, my husband is generally late. So he doesn't have German eyes. So, um, here in the middle, we have a deadline. So, and they say that in some culture, the horizon is bigger. So they have the deadline, but this is flexible because of long-term relationship and their relationship are more important to keep than the deadline. Well, the Germans, is not that they don't care about relationship, but they use this relationship to be on time. There's nothing wrong in neither of them, it's just a different face of the same coin. <laughs> Now, Zimbardo and Boyd, their research mainly, their research goes mainly on the Western culture. So they say there are three uh, past perspectives, uh, three time perspectives, as I already talked, uh, past, present, and future. And each of them, they have like two sub-categories. Past negative, so when we concentrate only on what was going wrong, uh, past positive, when we remember rather what was going right. In the present, we have present fatalism. So we are having a destiny, everything is written, no matter what we do. We are going to fulfill this destiny. Present hedonism, everything is about pleasure in the moment. I have no idea what is going on tomorrow, so it's better that I do something nice today. <laughs> and future perspective, which is one is just future, so we are just planning, and one is transcendental. I will not talk about transcendental because this is a whole day, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's generally saying about people taking decisions in life and living their life because something is going to happen after life. So there are different religious uh, things or they are doing something during their life to let the heritage, uh, like a uh, discovery, a scientific thing for humanity. So this, if we will all have a little bit more transcendental future uh, orientation, I think we will be more careful with our planets and with our environment and with what we let to our children. So we all have this perspective in, in us only that we use them in different manners. So we are like predisposed to use one more than others. And this is affecting, of course, um, how our life is going on. But how do we learn them? We are all born present adults. So when we are babies, we cry for food and comfort. We don't care about anything else. Um, and later on, little by little, we learn from our families, from the school, from work. Um, there are values that we share in the society we are um, growing or working or uh, studying. Um, but also the pace of life. The pace of life is measuring, for example, in a city, uh, how fast people are uh, walking on the street when they are not in a hurry, or the, uh, how long it takes to make basic transactions like uh, buying a stamp from the post and, and sending a letter. Um, and
And uh, this can be measured, and the faster is the pace of life, the less probable that people will help a stranger which might be in need if they sit, for example, in the street. So, but this we just learn. We are influenced by it, and we can change it as well if we change the environment. Now, what is going on if we have an excess? So, this predisposition is more of an excess in one of the perspectives. Those who are past predisposed, they are not enjoying the present. Um, there is um, no hope for the future, or they are not interested in the future, so no plan. The present, they take, the present oriented people, they take rather emotional or impulsive decisions, uh, not thinking uh, of the consequences of their behavior very much, no planning, little learning. Those who are future oriented, okay, we are all trying to arrive there because the society is surprising them very much, but they have no pleasure in the moment. There are those guys that never take holiday, maybe. And they are prone to workaholism or anxiety. So the purpose would be <laughs> to balance these attitudes, to have a better and happier life. And this is bringing us to the second part. Let's see how we do with everything we learned until now. 